And since we all know that the budget will not balance itself, <laughs> when are you going to balance the budget? Welcome back to Moose and Loose. My name's David. Today, we've got Justin Trudeau answering questions, getting booed, getting grilled by mayors, councillors, and municipal representatives at this conference in Alberta. Now, to start off this conference, Trudeau is acting like a wily e. coyote, like he's half drunk or something. I don't even know what to make of this. I'm going to ask you one question. David, I saw a Michelin executive the other day who was very excited about Bridgewater as well. So, yeah, we're, we're working on that. It was in France. He was pushing a, a, a veteran in a wheelchair who was there sponsoring or something. <laughs> And he said, oh, we love Nova Scotia. I'm like, oh, yeah, David's going to love to hear that. So awesome. There you go. That's awesome. I'm going <laughs> to <laughs> That's awesome. So he goes on to babble a bit. But then they bring up all these mayors and councillors, and they start asking Trudeau questions, and they do not hold back. So the first guy here absolutely blasts him on the, the budget. <laughs> this is hilarious. Over the last 10 years, you've added over a trillion dollars in debt to our national economy. That comes along with a price tag of approximately $32.3 billion in debt servicing costs per year, which if we divided that money between every municipality in Canada, every single municipality, small and large, would have an additional $9 million. And since we all know that the budget will not balance itself, <laughs> when are you going to balance the budget? <laughs> Look at this fake smile. He's like, uh oh, I, don't, I got caught on this one. Oh, this is an awkward question. What do I do? Smile and laugh. Excellent. Excellent. Well, listen, I, I really appreciate the question because it gives me an opportunity to sort of highlight some of the things about how the Canadian economy is doing. There are three, the three largest. Uh, so when he gets really backed into a corner, he likes to talk a lot with his hands and really do a lot of gestures. You saw the very first motion he did. He had his hand up like this. It's a power move. He wants to show he's in control. That's why, you know, he's doing the three, all this stuff. Triple A rated economies in the world are the United States, Germany, and Canada. We have a triple A rating because international bond rating agencies look at Canada's... That's a stop sign hand. That's, uh, he does, I don't like this question. I'm the one in control here. I'm the one in power. Economy, look at our fiscal situations of both gov uh, federal and subnational provincial governments and say that is on a sustainable track. We have the lowest deficit of any economy in the G7 the large, largest industrialized economies, and we have the lowest debt to GDP ratio of any country in the G7. So what that's garbage. That whole debt to GDP garbage is nonsense because they just keep using the Canada pension plan numbers as value. Other countries don't use that, but that's not their money. That's Canadians money. It's just it's inflated. It's garbage. We're actually at the bottom if you remove that. So don't even listen to this. What that means is our economy macroeconomically is doing better than just about anyone else out there. And companies around the world are seeing that are coming to invest in Canada because they see it as a good. And we just keep looking at his hand gestures. He's doing this like you're a child. You are wrong. You are long. Let's look at him. Investment in the future. Now, I've said all that to say the Canadian economy is in stellar position from a macroeconomic level. But the reality that all of you know is that Canadians are squeezed right now. Oh, We're really? faced with grocery prices that are too high, rents that are too high, uh, mortgage payments that are too high. We're faced with uh, challenges around uh, fuel and heating costs that are really hurting ordinary families. Oh, really? How did that happen, Justin? <laughs> it's amazing he actually admits this. So we made the decision that if the federal government has a really strong fiscal position, which we do, by all independent... Look at that hand gestures, man. It's always pointing, hand up, I'm in control, I'm Mr. Power. So we're delivering dental care. We're delivering pharmacare. We're stepping up with $10 a day child care. We're stepping up with child food, uh, student food programs. Things I don't need. Seniors dental plan, pharmacare, ten dollar a day child care, school food program. I don't need any of those things. None of those help me. I'm sure they help some people. Little bits here and there. Why not just make things cheap and let us pay for what we need in this country? Well, we're dropping inflation and we're being there for Canadians, not with cuts and austerity. And we're going to keep doing that. And on the carbon price, it actually puts more money in the pockets of eight out of 10 Canadian families. That's a parliamentary budget officer who says that. It's absolutely true. <laughs> 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 he 
just got booed. Look at that fake laugh. More money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadian families. That's a parliamentary budget officer who says that. It's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the, the smile, the laugh of a diabolical villain. Some Bond villain or whatever. Gargamel. Pick one. What is going on here? He's, just, he's loving this. This is a sick and twisted dictator. You just got booed, Trudeau. You should feel shame. You didn't get booed by the general public. You got booed by mayors and, and councillors and municipal leaders. Does this man have any shame? I don't think so. Prime Minister, I would like to know if you have been in person to the North Peace region of Alberta to actually see our oil and gas industry. If so, where and when? Because your misinformation continues, which I am confident would not be the case if you experienced the true clean industry for yourself, and that way we would not need the carbon tax. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, oil and gas has been a strong driver of the national economy for many, many decades. Let's just look at his posture here. Look at his hands. So he's got one hand, a fist, on another one. This is like some power move. He's trying to, and he leaned forward like he's talking to a kid. Listen here, little sonny. Just pay attention to this guy's body language. The issue, though, excuse me, ma'am, the issue is that the world is choosing to reduce its carbon emissions right now. Investment is flowing where carbon emissions are being reduced. The oil sands were a technological innovation to get energy out of the oil sands. There's a technological problem we're having right now of reducing carbon emissions uh, around the world because uh, the world is warming at an alarming rate. Based on what metrics, on what timeline? This is virtue signaling garbage. We need to respond to the challenges of climate change and why? Why do we have to do that? We are literally 1.5% of the global carbon emissions. Quite frankly, we need to make sure that the energy industry in Alberta is not just able to reduce its emissions, but able to innovate so there are more good jobs for Albertan energy workers for decades to come, even as the world becomes less reliant on oil and gas. That is the situation we're facing right now. It's not me who's decided that uh, the, the, the world uh, is changing. We have to continue to invest in transforming and reducing our emissions while we continue to provide energy to the world. Wouldn't that mean providing clean LNG to China and India so they can reduce their emissions? He doesn't want to admit this. He knows that th that fact is right. Price on pollution, the carbon tax, is an important part of that. It has been designed so that 8 out of 10 families get more money back every year from that price on pollution than it actually costs them. That's the core math of it. it it's just garbage. It's not true. And you're not even incorporating the fact that 31% of Canadians don't get a rebate. It just costs us more in gas and groceries and everything else that is getting taxed from that. This is just a tax. Just call it that. It is a tax. You're taking our money. It's phony, baloney garbage. It's already been proven you've ended up with $2 billion more billion than what you gave back. It's a way of driving down our emissions while we prepare for a stronger economy of the future. Yeah, you don't track that, so you're just making up garbage. Future, and I know Albertans want to protect our environment for future generations like all Canadians do, and that's what we're going to continue to do together. I can't believe he brought up that 8 out of 10 garbage twice, not only in Alberta, but saying it to a bunch of mayors. These are smart people. They got into their positions for a reason. They're not buying this garbage, Trudeau. That's why they're booing you. You're getting booed by mayors across Canada. For decades, the people of Grassineros have dealt with the ongoing impacts of colonialism and poisoning of their water from a paper mill, dumping mercury into the English Wabagoon River system. A flourishing community that lived and thrived off water and fish systems has faced neurological and community poisoning by mercury. Despite meager attempts, remediation has never been adequately addressed. Today, chemicals are still being dumped into the water, further exacerbating the mercury in the ecosystem. Despite the promise by the federal liberals to address clean water across the country, Grassy Narrows remains on a boil water advisory today with research showing a link between poisoning and high-use suicide.
rates. How do you think a First Nation community like Grassy Narrows is impacted when their elders die early due to mercury poisoning and their youth die by suicide due to mercury poisoning? And what are the government's plans to not only prevent these tragedies, but also to hold companies accountable for their environmental harms and help the people of Grassy today? Thank you. No. That's deplorable that that's happening. There shouldn't be any problems with drinking water in this country. Like, what is going on? He doesn't spend money on anything that is important. Um, we have moved forward significantly. That's why the federal government is working with the community and will continue to work with the community uh, to clean, uh, to protect, uh, and to move forward. It is not an easy situation, as everyone can imagine. I want to address something more close to my heart, something that is a part of my heart, I, I want to say I'm a proud Indigenous man and a member of Lac La Ronge Indian Band. I arrived here in this beautiful city on the eve of a terrifying water main break. I was happy to see the quick and comprehensive response, but it also brought me much sadness. I was reminded of, of my friends living on reserves in Saskatchewan, my family in Manitoba, who can't turn on their taps and pour themselves a glass of water, ever. I know adults who have never been able to pour themselves a glass of water from the tap in their own home. Here in Calgary and in my home in Prince Albert and in many non-Indigenous communities in Canada, really, having clean water in every kitchen and bathroom is considered necessary. He's getting grilled here again on clean water. Uh, he is well deserved. Grill him as much as you can. In very many Indigenous communities, for very many of my friends and family, it's nothing short of a luxury. My question to you is this. Why is this okay? In this beautiful, wealthy, developed, free country, why is it okay for my people to go without water? And I know that work is being done, but I also know that it's being done at the speed of molasses. It's not considered an emergency, <laughs> not like the water main break in here in Calgary. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is an issue that has many different uh, aspects to it. Uh, that we're dealing with entirely. You can't just plonk down a new water treatment plant. It involves uh, training up people so the local community can actually continue to run it. It means uh, ongoing investments. It means uh, a sustainable long-term future. And I'm s sorry, what? You can't just plonk down a water treatment plant? I'm pretty sure you can build one and while you're building it, you can train people. So when it's ready, it's built, you can have those people run it. What kind of dumb answer was that? <laughs> <laughs> These are the investments we're making to lift boil water advisories and keep them lifted. Uh, he is such an idiot. Like, he is just, look at this face. Like, <laughs> for decades to come. Uh, it's not going as fast as anyone would like, but it is unacceptable. And I thank you for bringing that forward. He always has to place blame on someone else. or It's, it's everyone's problem. It's the world's problem. It's never his fault. He's, the, he's just the worst. In my city only, 28,000 people, seniors, children, women, has no doctor. And we are not near to even think that we're going to have a doctor soon and we're going to deal with this issue as a uh, municipality. Knowing this is not a municipality issue, it's not a federal issue. But I'm urging you as a proud Canadian and proud Kingstonian that if you can step up and start a blue ribbon program, hire the doctor from other countries, train them, and give it to the promise and force them to take it so you can serve these Canadians who need that health services. So Trudeau's feeling awkward here because that's Pierre Polyev's plan, the Blue Ribbon Program, bring in doctors from other countries, make it certification, make it easy for them to come to Canada. You look at, he's picking with his finger here, he's flicking it up and forth. He knows he has to come up with an answer that's not too supportive of what he's saying because that's Polyev's plan. And he's not feeling comfortable about it. Just look at his hands. For who gave the life to work for this country. Now they're seeking, they're looking at your, you and your government to provide them the health services. I would appreciate that if you can step up, you know, being our prime minister and, you know, uh, help us to take us out of this problem as well. He doesn't like this question at all. Uh, yes, on uh, accelerated accreditation, uh, there are things that the federal government can do and is doing uh, to make sure we're bringing in uh, more doctors, but ultimately it is to the provincial bodies to actually uh, approve the accreditation in their medical health systems. We're putting pressures on the provinces, but uh, the more all of us can put pressures on the provinces to get more uh, primary health. Uh. Placing the blame on Canadians, he's like, here, you, you guys have to do this. Put pressure on your local municipalities well <laughs> this guy he's just he's so bad he's so bad as a prime minister he blames everyone for everything he just can't do anything jumping over to my group let's see what memes we've got today 
when you post a meme in the same group you got it from. You know, I'm something of an idiot myself. <laughs> Most expensive vehicle to operate in 2023-2024. Yeah. Not gonna lie, he doesn't look bad for 135. <laughs> <laughs> this post here says Sean Fraser was voted parliamentarian of the year voted by all parties. What is this? A neat thing happened in Ottawa. Sean won parliamentarian of the year award from iPolitics. What is this garbage? This man is like the worst one of them. We're super proud of him. Like this is just <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. I've destroyed the most amount of lives in Canada. The pillage people. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge. Ask Siri or your phone's bot who the biggest idiot in Canada is and post a screenshot of the answer. Who's the most disliked person in Canada? Justin Trudeau, the <laughs> current prime minister appears to be disliked <laughs> in Canada based on recent polls. <laughs> Justin Trudeau is a complete idiot video. 2018, speaking of Justin Trudeau. <laughs> These results here are hilarious. Here's another one. Justin Trudeau's incompetent, corrupt, an idiot and all, or all above <laughs> Quora. <laughs> I have to go to work every day. I don't. Fair enough, but you also don't have any money. Neither do you. <laughs> There's no such thing as government funded. It's all taxpayer funded. Exactly. Today I learned what CBC stands for. The Canadian Baloney Corporation. <laughs> a man followed a girl into the bathroom, stating he identified as a woman. The man's teeth were knocked out by the girl's father, who identifies as the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> it's gonna be gay. <laughs> Why does inclusiveness include everything except opposing views? Yeah, good question. That's what we're going to wrap up this episode. Let me know what you guys think down below of Trudeau getting booed by mayors of Canada. <laughs> this doesn't get any worse, does it? Like, how much more embarrassment can the man take? This is just, it's not even the, the everyday Canadian like you and I heckling the guy on the street. He's getting booed by the mayors. <laughs> it's just, it's so dumb. It's become so outrageous. There isn't a single week that goes by. There isn't a new scandal. So thanks for watching the end of the video here. I greatly appreciate it all. You be sure to subscribe, ring the notification bell. We'll keep fighting for freedom. I'll see you guys in the next one.